I guess I've always had a kind of armchair interest in science. You know, I did science in high school and science for non-science majors in college, but then reading about it and then reading what other people are doing with it was really the impetus to see how that's being interpreted and uh, what new developments are happening and, and where it looked to me like the interpretations were, were not uh, authentic to the science itself. They were introducing other elements and yet not recognizing that, which could make it look like a conflict between science and religion or science and theology. So I saw my work a lot as a kind of work of clarification going through and figuring out what are what is theology really saying, how, what is the Bible saying, and what is science saying as science and how we put those two together. So I was really helped by the Center for Theology and Natural Sciences at uh, the GTU in Berkeley to uh, kind of join in, I mean, kind of a late comer to that discussion, but to join in on the discussion they already had going on for several years about God's action in the world and how science can address that problem. So when I came on the scene, I had a lot of uh, research and material that had already been done that I could s simply pick up and carry on from, from what they were doing. And I think I had a different angle on things, too. I was the one of the only ones in that discussion, at least at uh, GTU, the Graduate Theological Union, that uh, was using the Thomistic tradition, uh, Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas, and trying to bring that to bear on these questions that others were asking. So I think that was my contribution to that, uh, to that area. Within this tradition, what I've been more drawn to is the whole idea of chance, because to some, that seems like it's antithetical to the notion of divine providence. And so if science is now embracing chance, which is exciting, you no longer have a deterministic world, but quantum physics has an idea of chance, and biology with uh, evolution, spontaneous genetic changes, also a notion of chance. So that's coming back into science. But if that looks to some like it's uh, threatening to the notion of divine providence, that's uh, would be the opposite, or how would you put that together? That's one of my projects is to, to show how the two can go together. Uh, so, I mean, one of the ideas I'm toying with is to just uh, look at God more explicitly in relation to chance, and could chance itself be a kind of a model for talking about God? You know, Why does God create the world? Well, there isn't any cause of that other than God himself and divine love. But something like chance, spontaneity in the world, why does something happen? People say by chance, it simply happens. So with God, it wouldn't be an arbitrary thing, but something of the, the flavor of spontaneity of divine love. There's nothing that pulls it, pushes it, makes it do this, and yet there it is. So I'm thinking, this is just kind of a beginning idea of how chance could kind of model that so it wouldn't be antithetical to the notion of divine love, divine providence, but could be almost a, a way of illustrating that. What is it about chance? It, it, it simply spontaneously happens and what is it about divine love? I mean there isn't any necessity, it's simply uh, uh, is the, the divine um, being itself uh, acting and having this love for the world, love for creation. So it's the opposite of a kind of deterministic look at things and even some who see God as kind of determined to act in certain ways. It brings out that love is really simply a gift. It's, it's uh, this, God didn't have to love us, didn't have to create, and yet God does. So, so in, in the same way, when things happen by chance, they didn't have to happen, and yet they just do. So it isn't, I wouldn't want to say that God's action itself or God's love is merely a matter of chance. That would be the wrong way to look at it. But to see divine action as, uh, as having that same spontaneity of chance, that same energy in a sense, and to bring that out, that's what I'm thinking of. No, I think that's an important question, how, how science shapes imagination or how science shapes the way people look at the world. It, it's funny how it, it kind of just seeps in. It's part of our worldview. We can't get out of it. So uh, how does that happen? And then what is the way that theology, the scriptures, can also be shaping? Certainly they have, you know, historically, and not just in faith, but we can see it historically, how scripture has, uh, has 
shaped the culture that we live in, the world that we live in. So to bring those two important factors together, I think that's the, the key, one of the key things I hope that I'm uh, doing to allow uh, the imagination, that is the way we see the world, to be influenced not just by a kind of a scientific uh, reductionistic approach to things, but a more holistic way of seeing things, which is the way of philosophy and of theology. We be begin in theology with, with the whole, creation and the God who creates, and in philosophy with being and the whole, and allow that wholeness then to also shape the way people see things as a kind of counterpoint to the more reductionistic approach that science tends to follow.